This is a section for the Alpha Amiga system for the GameCube and the Game Boy Advance player system. Uh, it does look a bit of a bundle of wires and uh, looks a bit untidy and that's precisely because at the moment it is. Um, it's not in its finished format. The reason it's not in its finished format is that there's going to be two console based systems here using CD type drives. There of course is the GameCube and alongside it will be the Amiga CD32 system. It will literally go along this space here and the board will lay across the top. Because this section is going to be made as a section, as a pull out uh, piece, so that the CDs can be easily loaded. So to that end I haven't been able to paint on the top of this plastic cover yet to make it look all nice and pretty um, because without the other piece along if I was to try to paint them into two sections it would look like there's a join. This way I can do it so it looks quite seamless. So onto the various components. The CD drive as we all know is a very very thick affair however in this, in this particular circumstance it doesn't actually have a disadvantage because also the height for the Amiga system uh, will be around the same height in any case. I've got two um, memory card ports that have been relocated. The only reason that one sticks out more than the other is literally the fact that that card is longer than this card for no other reason. They've both been installed in exactly the same position. The wires from the main um, the main motherboard go into here. This, this length is quite suitable. It's about sort of six inches there about, and uh, it works okay. And to drive the drive board, again the wires go back to the main motherboard. I have experimented with different types of heat sinks, but frankly ended up using the original one that came with the GameCube. However, to keep things nice and cool, I've incorporated two GameCube fans which have been epoxied onto the heatsink and it really does keep everything very very cool indeed. The part over here is for the controller which is of course a much larger board before. I'm providing pinouts to uh, illustrate what can connect to what. And the reason I put this as a as a plug is that um, I needed to uh, play with the controller board and it's much more convenient to have it separate. It just plugs into place and the job is done. Over here is the power to the system. We have the 5 volts, the 12 volts, which is only really used for the, uh, for the audio anyway. Um, the main 1.9 volts and the 3.43 volts line, which is down here. Again, a lot of the pins that go down to the power board aren't required. Uh, so that saved a bit of hassle. And down here you see a resistor. This is actually very similar to the one that came out from an official uh, Nintendo video um, plug. Uh, one part goes to the composite video connection and the other one goes down to ground. And over here are the connections to the Game Boy Advance board. This is for the player. So that again has been relocated. Um, and hot glued into position onto this piece of board and across here is the relocation for the Game Boy Advance. It's been put into this fashion so that it's quite easy to take the cartridge in and out um, and alongside as mentioned before will be the other drive unit. So it doesn't quite look integrated at the moment but it will be. The top piece will end up nice and flat. The power supply is this brick which I made before this is the original one from the GameCube and uh, I've got other voltages because the Alpha Amiga requires um, several voltages mostly positive and also with a couple negative. So for the purpose of this just using a standard on off switch connected into one 12 volt supply to provide a whole series of voltages. This of course is a cable that goes to the controller from the base unit. What I've done is to put this into a PlayStation port so that the plug can be easily removed. This of course is on a six, six foot wire um, as you'd normally get with one of these controllers because after all this isn't going to be a handheld portable and this is what the master controller looks like that all of the systems I'm making will work into. 
all the connections are wired into an N64 game port so what I've done then is to open up an N64 game cartridge and utilize all the pins there to connect the idea and it does work is that this plugs into here and then enables the master controller to work with whatever con console system controller board is in place it keeps all the contacts separate and it keeps everything working as you've no doubt noticed this is very much in its raw state um, I need to build up the size, make it look pretty I've got uh, all sorts of plans for the, for the controller itself and I'm going to make a dedicated video to, video to it later on uh, this is just to show the concept so I'm going to plug it in and then get the games running and uh, you can see that it all works In this video I'm going to show the system working. It's a bit awkward to utilise because as you see the joystick's dangling um, however the concept is to show that things are working fine. On the keypad I've got this button here to act as a start and certainly it's in this configuration because some systems like the Intellivision and ColecoVision require the 12 button keypad um, and of course most systems require two if not four of these buttons so on a system like the GameCube that doesn't require these buttons it makes good sense rather than installing specialized buttons to use the ones that are currently in place there will of course be overlays over this on the finished model which will be game specific and uh, will show precisely what needs to be uh, pressed so uh, this is to also illustrate that the memory card works fine if I move the joystick downwards to select it you can see it's retrieved the games I'm just going to put this onto one of the levels so that you can see that the joystick works fine and uh, even more importantly the shoulder buttons um, because if there's any interference on the lines it affects these the most um, and you end up with characters moving around that shouldn't be so to start this off move the joystick and you can see that the character moves around just as they should do with no issues at all if we now use the shoulder buttons using the right one moves it nicely moves the left and as you see there's no movement so the A button of course will in this game lay the bomb and the B will make it explode let's just quickly run out the way and there you go. If we hit a character, the rumble activates like this. You heard it moving there, it's because it's not installed properly in place. But it does show that even that works. And there you have it. Controller, shoulder, joystick, everything works through one port. And of course these will be interchangeable between different systems and work with uh, all of the consoles in the system. So that's the GameCube and I'm going to show the player. So the GameCube player is now running and I must say this is a, a far better quality um, video wise than the ones that came with the uh, third party ones. Here you can select in the menu um, for example changing the game or something that's much better having it full sized. So of course you then get into the game as per usual. You see it all works fine. Select the game and you're in.